Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Wow, my microphone is really far away. Sorry about that. I've been moving a lot of stuff around here in the office, so yeah. <laughs> so first of all, thanks to everyone for your kind comments on the yesterday's video on the announcement of our newest course or one of our newest courses, which is going to be the Cinematic Lightning for Maya. I, as I mentioned in that video, I'm really, really happy with the results. It's going to be up very, very soon. As soon as it's up, I'll let you guys know, of course. And uh, yeah, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed that one and uh, learn a lot to improve your uh, portfolios and create amazing looking things. I'm sure you guys are going to do that. So today we're actually going to take a detour into something um, that's I mean, the, the technology has been here for a couple of um, for a couple of years now, uh, but uh, I thought that it was quite like difficult to get into, and it's actually not that bad. Uh, of course, there's a little bit of a learning curve, uh, but it's called photo photogrammetry. When I first learned about this, I thought it was photogrammetry. No, it's a grammetry, like like in grams, right? So the way this works is um, you basically take pictures of an object with a traditional camera, like the one I'm using to record right now, and uh, we're going to be using a software to process those images and create amazing-looking uh, models. Now, what I mean by amazing-looking model, of course, it's not like a <laughs> they're not going to be perfect. That's a, that's one of the like the like steep learning curves about uh, photogrammetry that you need to clean the elements that you create. So even though the model that you see on screen it will look very good, it will be complete garbage for anything but maybe 3D printing. Uh, but if we want to create things for like games or animation and stuff like that, uh, it's still a very powerful tool. But there's a lot of cleanup involved, okay? So um, before we jump onto the actual like um, softwares, I just want to show you the pictures that I took because I did a little bit of research and I'm actually going to do this test. Like I haven't rehearsed this, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be an experimentation for you guys. I've done the the, um, the photogrammetry before, but um, in this case, I really hope this thing is going to work as I'm expecting. So there we go. So I asked my brother, uh, who likes to wear boots every now and then, to lend me his boots, and uh, I went ahead and took some pictures. When you're taking pictures for photogrammetry, one of the main or the most important recommendations that they give you is try to do it on a, on a light setup or in a light place where you have very like ambient light, no direct light. You don't want direct shadows or direct lights because it's going to like show on the textures if you want to use the textures. If you want to just use the models, then it's fine. But also uh, like harsh shadows and harsh uh, light will also make it a little bit more difficult for the softwares to properly um, recreate the objects. The other thing is you are going to be taking 360 degree pictures or pictures from every single angle and uh, you're going to try to do it in uh, 10 to 15 degrees increments. So don't like try to just take eight pictures and that's it. I took about 100 pictures, I think, and this is the, the result. So as you can see, try to be as uh, as focused and as, and as close as possible again, because this is going to make it a lot easier for the uh, software to to properly like calibrate this. I did two uh, turns. The first one was a little bit like further out and the second one was a little bit closer. If you have like a like a tripod or something, that could be a little bit better. I just did it freehand um, and uh, yeah, this is the result. So let's see how this one uh, turns out. So there's two main softwares that you can use to create or to generate your uh, photogrammetry. And today we're only gonna be focusing on creating the elements and, uh, and getting into a, a software, in this case, ZBrush. Uh, but we, uh, tomorrow we're gonna talk about like the cleanup process. So Meshroom is the first one. Meshroom is an open source um, reconstruction software that you can use to create uh, your elements. It's um, relatively light. Uh, it definitely uses, uh, it, it does need to use a NVIDIA graphics card, unfortunately. So if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, I don't think you can get the best out of this one because um, it uses the CUDA course to, to generate the elements. Now, in my tests, uh, in the last couple of months that I've been doing a little bit of this process, uh, this uh, is not the greatest. It's it's really good, but it really depends on having great uh, photographs. So if your photo skills are not there or your camera is not that good, then this one might not give you the best shapes. However, as we're going to be talking about later, one of the advantages that I see about photogrammetry is not necessarily how accurate we get the scans but if you're, because if you really want like a super super accurate scan you're of course going to invest on the equipment it's more about the general forms right like getting you as close as possible to the to the basic forms so that it's easier it, it, it makes your lives a lot easier to to work with and the other one which is the one that we're going to be using is called reality capture 
and reality capture is uh, now owned by unreal engine so as you can see right here they're going to be releasing this thing in the next couple of months which is going to be amazing i'm, I'm waiting i i missed the, the beta i didn't miss it I, I actually like logged in uh, at the time that they were asking but it filled up like quite uh, quite quite uh, fast so they're going to be doing or they're going to be releasing this thing called the reality scan which is a an app that you're going to have on your phone android and uh, ios and like you're literally gonna be able like if you haven't seen the video guys it's just it's just crazy like you literally scan the object as you can see right here the software kind of guides you through like the the elements that you need and once it processes it you have the asset and this asset can be immediately imported as you can see right there into unreal engine it's just crazy guys it's just crazy so um in the next couple of years we're gonna have a lot of tools that are gonna make our lives so much easier but again as we've mentioned before these are tools you're still gonna have to have that artistic uh like sensibility and uh, and know of course how to use the tools to get um the best possible results but yeah like things like this that you would normally have to sculpt and do uh, all that stuff we will be we will be freeing a lot of that time we're going to be able to do it a lot faster and then we can use all of that free time to do other things that are not going to be as easy to do with a uh, software like this so reality capture is the other software that i'm uh, gonna be using so i'm actually gonna open it right now now, I am going to mention this. Uh, the only bad thing about Reality Capture is that you do need to pay for it. So the software is free, but once the processing is done and you want to export the objects, you need to pay for it. I don't find it, to be honest, like for the amount of things that it does, I don't find it... Um, uh, what's the word? I don't find it over expensive. You can see it right here. There we go. So this is the plans. Uh, like I normally buy this one, the twenty US dollars. So it's it's uh, in my case it's four hundred pesos, which is relatively uh, affordable, and you get eight thousand credits. In my experience, a normal scan like this one, it should be about two hundred credits or something. Let's we're gonna see how many credits it's gonna take out of my uh, of my uh, budget. But yeah, I mean again, usually this kind of things is the kind of things that you would definitely uh, include in the quote that you're gonna give your client. So if someone says, hey, I want you to do a scan of this photograph or of this statue in the price that you're gonna be doing, you're gonna include that. If you're gonna use it for your own personal use, again, I don't find it bad. Like if you're gonna do a portfolio piece and you wanna scan a couple of things, if you buy this one, the 20 USD, it's gonna be great. I actually got a, a like promo code when I first uh, got uh, Capturing Reality, which gave me like, 30% off or something. So again, it's affordable. It's really, really affordable. Of course, if you want to do this one, <laughs> uh, it's uh, quite a bit of uh, money, right? Like I, I don't have this amount of money right now to to buy the uh, the whole license and I don't use this as much. Uh, but if you're going to be like I I starting a business about like uh, photo scanning and, and stuff like that, then paying this for unlimited license, I think it's, it's uh, worth it. So yeah, now let's jump into um, into this one right here. The tutorial actually, like if you go into the documentation, it's a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna make it really simple for you guys. The first thing is we are gonna go up here and we're gonna input a folder. So we're gonna click here, oh, folder. We're gonna navigate to the projects. So 2021, we're gonna go next to live assets and we have the boots and hit okay and as you can see it will immediately find the 106 images that i um have on that folder and the thing that we need to do is we need to click this button right here which is called align images just click there and wait this is where um i'm actually uh, lagging there we go i think that's a little bit better sorry if that gave you like a little bit of a bump it's a lot of processing power you can actually see that this thing's a little bit slow Okay, I just paused there to explain. I'm gonna unpause it. Uh, or I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna unpause it, and then I'm gonna continue. What this will do is it will match all of the images to try to identify the objects that you are trying to capture. So in this case, the boots. Uh, as you saw there, the computer goes crazy because it's a lot of processing power. The bigger or the better your computer is, the uh, faster this is gonna be. I am expecting this to be about five, maybe 10 minutes. And that's why I really like reality capture because it's really, really fast with Meshroom. I did some tests and it was taking two, three hours and um, it's not. it's not just not good. <laughs> it's not good for me so uh, if you value time and you are not uh, afraid of uh, spending a little bit of money then uh, this one is an excellent option i'm gonna pause the recording real quick i'm gonna do the full alignment of the images and then i'll show you the result 
Uh, so there you go. Uh, as you, I, I think you might have missed that one, but it took two minutes. Uh, two minutes here on the machine. At first, it said that it was going to take like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, but it only took two minutes. And you can see the information here. Like all of the images have created this element right here. And uh, I actually did a good job on the photographs because as you can see right here on the components, it only found one component. Like the, the software was, uh, or it's smart enough to see that, okay, this guy is trying to take a picture of this boots. So uh, if you have multiple objects or if you're trying to do multiple sessions at the same time, this is where things would go. Now over here on the calculate model, I'm gonna select this preview quality right here. And you're gonna see real quick how we get this preview uh, right here. So as you can see, it's actually even taking a little bit of the information from the, uh, what's the word, from the background. But look at this, like this reconstruction right here, even this model right here, this just preview model would be really, really good for me to bring into ZBrush and just start cleaning up. And instead of having to worry about creating the base machine and everything, what is it? 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, we already have this. Well, of course, it took me like another like five or 10 minutes to take the pictures. Uh, but as you can see, it was really, really fast and really easy to generate this. Now I'm going to hit this one and I'm going to say normal quality. We need to wait a little bit. I'm going to pause real quick. So it was taking a little bit longer and I realized what the hell did I miss? And yeah, uh, very rookie mistake here. You need to select this box right here and we're going to scale this box down so that it only grabs the boots. Uh, navigation is with Alt and uh, the clicks. Right click is just movement. You can figure that one out. It's very easy. So there we go. Now by doing this, what we will make sure happens is that not only is it gonna be faster, we're only gonna be focusing again on the boots. So we'll just enclose the boots here in the box as close as possible uh, to make this thing a lot easier. And we just calculate model normal quality. There we go. So it should take way, way less. Uh, that was a very, very rookie mistake. Very well. So the computation is uh, done. It took about, uh, I would say, like three or four minutes. Um, and yeah, this is what we have. So as you can see, the reconstruction is really, really good. Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, it's not perfect, right? Like, as you can see, there's a lot of imperfections. Like, sometimes even the texture difference on the on the color, like, uh, sometimes, you know, leather gets, like, darker or brighter in certain areas. That can get interpreted as noise, and it's all of this noise right here. Can we make this thing better? Yes, of course. If we had more pictures, if we tried to calculate the model. Whoa. Where's my model? Where is my mother? Model. Did I select anything? Let me get it back. There we go. Just frame selection over here. Um, so yeah, um, as I was mentioning, there's uh, things that we can do to, to make this thing better, but this one looks pretty, pretty cool. Now, I don't think I want to use the textures, but if you want to use the textures, you can also go here to the workflow and uh, texturize this thing. So it will cal calculate the textures of your element. The reason why I don't like doing this is because it then gets a little bit complicated to calculate the roundness and everything. So I prefer to have just like the high quality model and then retexture it. I, I find it just a little bit easier. And it's unless you have like a, something super, super specific, uh, it's it's rather um, it's rather easy to retexture this. So now let's go to the to the final part of the uh, the actual exportation of this thing. So we're just going to hit export right here. And there's a couple of things we can export this uh, as I'm going to export this as an FBX. I like to export this in the um, same folder where I was uh, working. So right here, do, 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 do. we go to next live assets and boots. Well, let's just call this boots. There we go. So here's where you're gonna have to um, connect your uh, element. And as you can see, there we go. So it's only gonna get me, or is it only gonna cost me 636 credits. So it's $1.59. So that's in pesos, that's uh, like 40 pesos. That's uh, some Takis and uh, Coca-Cola. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Let's just confirm my payment. There we go. It acquires a thing and we just export this thing. So just hit okay. This thing is going to be exported, and while well, this thing is exported, let's open up ZBrush. So again, imagine having like a uh, like a prop or something that has been made custom or like some antique stuff. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of like potential with this technology. And for two dollars, I was able to generate these boots uh, that, of course, I'm going to have to clean up. There's still some work involved, uh, but at least uh, we have everything that we need to start working here. So I'm just going to hit import. We're going to go to the boots again. And we're just gonna import them. 
And of course, what's going to happen here is we're going to have a super, super, super dense mesh. So it's kind of like working with a, like a Dynamesh with a, at a super high density. So as you can see, 3.1 million polygons or points. And there we go. This is what we have. Again, we don't have any textures. Uh, we don't have any color information, but we have the boots. One of the things that I don't like about the software, and it's uh, it's, it's just impossible to, to get that fixed, is the fact that uh, they will not be lined up. So there's no symmetry. A lot of people, uh, me included, would like working with symmetry. But let's do a little bit of cleanup here. So I'm going to grab my Control Shift, and I'm going to use Select Right to deselect all of this table right here. Like that. And as you can see, that's going to leave the boots completely, completely flat. We're just going to say delete hidden. And that's going to eliminate pretty much half of the of the polygons that we have. Then we eliminate all of the other ones right there. Let's do delete hidden. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, as you can see, I actually used a couple of water bottles on the inside of the boots to hold them uh, like steady. Um, and they're there. Like it's, they, it actually kind of like captured it nicely. But that's fine. We can uh, we can do all of that cleanup uh, very very soon. So now it's just a matter of doing Dynamesh. Now of course if we do Dynamesh, we're gonna lose all of this detail that we have right here. I want to show you why. Uh, this would not be a good option. As you can see, we lose a lot of the detail. We will go all the way by, uh, down to 222,000. So uh, we definitely need to incre increase the Dynamesh. Let's do something like a thousand. And dynamic and that should hold most of the elements again we're gonna have to do some reconstruction but this is a really really good and fast way to help us get to a really nice starting point and again for the price and for the speed as you saw it's really not that bad it is actually including a little bit of color information i'm going to turn it off and now finally what i'm going to do is i'm going to append a, a cube because i know that this cube is centered to the world and i'm going to grab this guys i'm just going to Try to get them as close as possible. Um, let's reset the, the pivot points. I'm going to try to get them as close as possible to a symmetrical uh, view. They're not going to be perfectly symmetrical, and that's fine. Even if we had a character, we can have asymmetrical characters. That's no big deal. Uh, but I just want to make sure that they're facing like forward. So in this case, let's uh, recenter the, the pivot point. Uh, this one right here. And just rotate them 90 degrees so that when we are facing forward, we are like actually facing forward. Let's do this one right here. And there we go. As you can see, we have the scan of uh, some very cool looking boots ready to go. The next step, and that's what we're going to be uh, seeing tomorrow, it's going to be the cleanup. We're going to be doing a little bit of cleanup here with the, with the boots. We're going to get rid of these things, and we're going to get them ready for a prop. I'm not sure if I want to do the whole pipeline because we still have a couple of other projects pending. I, I just wanted to use this, uh, what's the word, this um, uh, weekend to show you a little bit of this uh, process. But if you guys are interested in let me know in the comments if you want to see the full process for this one, which would be uh, cleanup, uh, which is tomorrow, and then UVs, textures, and stuff like that. Um, we're actually not going to do retopo this time around or tomorrow. It's just going to be the cleanup of the high poly model. But again, if you guys would like to see the rest of the process, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Okay. So yeah, that's it for now, guys. Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe. And also, if you have more free time this weekend and you want to uh, learn a little bit more about uh, 3D and all of the processes that are involved in it, let me remind you about our uh, Skillshare promo right here. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. That's it, guys. Thank you very much. Make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, and comment. I love reading your comments, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.